Hey again, everyone. So as I promised in one of the videos that I made last class, um, I wanted to make another video today. There's actually going to be two videos as part of this lesson where I'm going to show you first in this video how to use the databases. Um, and then in the second video, I'm going to show you how to actually use Wikipedia as a helpful tool. Uh, believe it or not, it can be helpful, but we'll talk about that more momentarily. <clears throat> um, if you took UCOR 101 at Duquesne, it's likely that you were introduced um, to how to use the databases, but I know some of you may not have taken UCOR 101 um, or you may need a refresher or something. So I do just want to go over how to use them and how they can be helpful and which ones for your specific projects I think are probably going to be the best. Um, okay, so I'm just going to look up again this silly Gumberg library. Um, if you've ever been inside the Gumberg Library, you know it's, they're, they're trying to fix it up, right? It's wildly out of date, but I actually really miss it right now because it was such an easy place to go and get books and research. <laughs> and now I have to do everything from a distance like all of us. Um, okay, and you'll see the second option here is just the A through Z databases um, and E resources list. So we're just going to click on that. Do, 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 it's thinking. Okay, and here again is that chat over on the right hand side in case you need some help from a librarian. And you'll see um, there's 334 databases and e resources. And so that's a lot <laughs> to try to parse through whenever you are collecting research. Um, so you don't want to use all 334 databases. That's just silly. So I want to point you to some specific ones that I think are going to be helpful. Um, as I noted in a previous video for you guys, CQ Researcher is extremely helpful. And remember, if you want to get there quickly, you can just click on the C and then they're all in alphabetical order. If you scroll on down, there's CQ Researcher and you have kind of also a little, uh, almost like a blurb for a book that you can read about what this specific database does. <clears throat> Um, then if we go back up, do, 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 you'll see over here on the side too, there's some popular databases and e-resources right over here. Um, and these are actually some of the ones that I'm going to show you today. I'm going to specifically show you these three, Academic Search Elite, JSTOR, and the ProQuest Research Library. Some of you may have very well used these before. Um, but let's go ahead and click on Academic Search Elite. Come on, it's thinking. Okay, so this is what it looks like whenever you first go in. Um, so Academic Search Elite is a really, really useful database because it's a very broad one. Uh, it is going to pull um, research for you from a variety of different fields. Um, actually, let me, hang on a sec. Let me go back here. This, uh, because I have the re recording thing up with the share screen, it's hard for me to actually see my browser tabs. <laughs> Let's go back to the A to Z databases for a minute. Um, so uh, if you go up here, you can actually look by subjects instead. So we can look by Catholic studies, chemistry, um, let's say education, right? These are all very specific ones that are just going to pull information for you from education. Um, however, Academic Search Elite, if I can get back to that tab, uh, again, is a very broad one that you can use. I, I can't imagine a research topic that you would be looking for that you couldn't find something about. Probably find stuff about aliens in here if you really wanted to. I don't know that you would want to, but you know, I guess if you're bored sometime, go ahead. Um, so this is the basic search function, and I actually don't recommend using the basic search function with any database. Um, I always recommend going to the advanced search function. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and you'll see it's going to give you some different options here. Um, and so I think the topic that I'm going to use as an example today is climate change. Um, and I'm going to do specifically climate change in relation to fracking. Uh, if you don't know what fracking is, it is a way of capture, capturing natural gas. It actually happens um, a lot throughout Appalachia. Um, there's a lot of places in uh, southwestern PA and throughout West Virginia that um, fracking happens. I think, in fact, I think it, it extends all the way down into the southern states, although I'm terrible at geography. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to look up climate change. And it's set to and, so it's going to include things that include uh, climate change and fracking. So it might actually be useful for a moment if I pause here and I explain why I'm using these specific search terms. Um, so climate change is a specific phrase uh, that I need to go together. So I've put it in these little quote marks here so that the search engine knows it needs to be that specific phrase. Not Because if I don't use those quote marks, it's going to look up things that say climate and then things that just say change. And that might not be useful to me. Um, and fracking means that it's going to include things that talk about climate change and specifically that talk about fracking. If you go down, you can say, see you can use or too, climate change or fracking. This means it'll bring up either this phrase or this. So this is a bit more broad and is a little bit more narrow because whatever it returns to me in the search is going to have to contain both this phrase and this word. Not is probably not a phrase you're going to use very often whenever you're researching. Um, but what it essentially means is that I'm just looking for climate change, but I don't want anything related to fracking. Uh, so if you're having a trouble and you're getting just like a bajillion um, sources, then not can be really useful, but mostly and or or is what you're going to stick with here. Um, and if we go down, um, you can see Boolean phrase, find all my search terms, find any of my search terms. I recommend leaving it where it is. Um, and then you can limit your results. Um, this is really useful because you can say, I only want full text. I only want scholarly or peer reviewed stuff. Um, you can get it in different languages, which is fascinating. Uh, you can also, and this might be the most useful for a lot of you, um, especially if you're trying to write about a topic that is very timely in the present, um, is uh, narrowing it down by when it specifically it was published. So typically you want things that are going to be published within the last 10 to 15 or so years, especially if you're talking about something like that has to do with um, modern society or that has to do with something like science, right? Because in, in those two specific areas, uh, we get new information because that's how science, right, and society works, and then we change accordingly. So we are talking in some ways about um, a topic whenever we're talking about climate change that does have to do with science. So I am going to go ahead and limit my publication date. I don't, I guess I do care about the month. I'm going to set it to January. And then what's 15 years back? Oh my goodness, it's 2005. Okay, what was I doing in 2005? I Sorry, I think I was in middle school. <laughs> I think I was in my last year of middle school. Um, and then we'll just go to the presents. We'll say July 2020. Okay, um, and then you can narrow it down by publication type, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do that in a different way. Okay, and then we're just gonna go down here and click search. Come on, come on friend. What are you doing? Oh, okay, it was just thinking very hard. Um, what an interesting first <laughs> result in the dumps. Um, okay, and you can see that it is kind of custom set for me. It actually only set it from 2010 through 2020. There must not really have been anything earlier um, about climate change in relation to fracking uh, in the five previous years. And over here, I can really limit it um, by the kind of publication source that I really want. So in your cases, you're probably going to want things like books, academic journals, maybe magazines, and maybe newspapers too. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone for right now though. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at my results that I got. There's a couple of ways to really quickly tell whether a source is going to be useful for you. So first off, in the dumps. Okay, I don't know what that means. Um, and, but then you can look down here and say, okay, so the subjects, it's related to the coal industry, to hydraulic fracturing, that's the more proper name of what fracking is, to climate change, clean energy, law in the US. Okay, well, this sounds kind of interesting. So maybe I would click on in the dumps. Come on, okay. Um, 
All right, and then I can kind of go down and I can see who the author is, the source, da 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 da. Okay, this is what we're looking for. This is called an abstract. And if you've never used an abstract before, they are so incredibly useful. Um, what an abstract essentially is, is just a tiny little summary of what that article or paper is talking about or arguing. So in this one, we can see the article discusses the condition of the coal industry in the US also tackled our topics on the development of horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, climate change, and the increase of natural gas and renewables. Explored is the implementation of the Clean Power Plan by the Environmental Protection Agency. This actually sounds like it might be kind of useful for a project about climate change in relation to fracking. It's mostly about coal, right? But it's also covering these other topics that are related, that are exactly about what I'm doing. And coal was kind of related to both to fracking and to climate change. And I can see here that it's from uh, May slash June 2016. So it's pretty recent too, just within the last four years, which is great. So if I go over here on the left side, you can see that there is a PDF full text. So Duquesne has um, free access for us as students to this text already. So all I have to do is click on PDF full text and ta-da, okay, it's thinking. Oh, it's giving us full color pictures. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. This is awesome. Looks like maybe this is from a magazine or something or some kind of um, periodical publication. And then I would have this source, right? This is great. So here I potentially have one source. And over here on the side, if I can move my little screen, you can see up here on the top hand right, I can choose to print it or I can choose to download it. And I recommend that you choose one of those two. Don't just like copy and paste the link to the article that you have found into a Word document or something. The link is going to expire and it'll expire like very quickly. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back for a second so I could show you guys something else. So if we're back on the main page of the article itself, you'll see over here on the left hand side, it also says something called tools. Um, and again, you can print it or email it or save it. But what's really, really useful for you guys, because I'm making you do MLA, sorry, not sorry, you have to, I know citations suck though, um, is that it'll cite it for you. So all you have to do is click on cite. Okay, and then you can see if you scroll down here, come on. Okay, there's MLA. There's the MLA citation for it. So all you have to do is copy and paste that and put it in your Works Cited page and you have it cited. You may need to fix the format of it a little bit so that it doesn't look wonky after you've pasted it, but that's a whole big step for you that's already done, um, which is something else that makes the databases really, really great too. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. All right. Um, doo, doo, doo. Okay, and then we can look at the very next, uh, so that was one, we're going to look at two very quickly. Um, okay, so this one's called Groundwater Law Abstraction in Responding to Climate Change, Assessing Recent Law Reforms in British Columbia and England. Mm, that doesn't really apply to the US, so I don't think we're going to want it. This one is about South Africa, which sounds fascinating, but again, doesn't really apply to the US. Um, Okay, fracking's major con contribution to cleaner air. Uh, I wanna go down where we don't have one as a full text. Um, in the age of it, yeah. Okay, um, all right. So let's say you were interested in this one, number eight, fracking and climate change reply. Let's just say you were interested. Come on. I'm not sure why my internet's being a little bit slow. Okay, well, it's on the right one. Um, again, you can see that this is set up the same pretty much as the other one, although this one actually does not have an abstract to it, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so if it does not have an abstract to it, sometimes you have to take a little bit of a risk. And what you can usually do is read the first one to two pages of an article in that case and see if it seems useful. If it doesn't seem like it's going to be useful after one or two pages, just nix it, get rid of it. Um, don't waste your time. But also over here on the left hand side, you're going to see that there isn't something called that PDF full text like we had with the other one. Instead, we have something called full text finder or plum X metrics. This is just telling you, oh, 
Okay, this is telling you um, how many people have actually used the article. That's not useful for you guys. What is potentially useful is this full text finder. So let's go ahead and click on this and it's gonna bring you, it's gonna like automatically upload a new page. Um, okay, and so you can see that we've gotten a couple of results here. Uh, so check for full text from the American Medical Association. So, and also we can browse the journal. So it looks like we don't have a downloadable PDF of this directly through the Gumberg Library, but you could click on these results and very possibly get it through those links. However, sometimes whenever you click on full text finder, nothing is going to come up except for this. No full text online, ILL, request items not available through Gumberg Library. So what that means is um, ILL stands for not ill, but interlibrary loan. And what that is, is that um, <clears throat> colleges and universities uh, throughout the United States are connected to actually share research. So what would happen is uh, Duquesne would take a request, which I'm going to show you how to fill out in a second, and um, they would just go ahead and send it out and somebody, a, another university or college anywhere in the U.S. would send us the article to you to use for free. Um, so let's go ahead and click on that. Do, do, do. Okay. So what's great about this is that you can see that the journal article request is like it's already filling in a lot of the information. This isn't always the case, but in this case it is. So it has all the information filled out for me. All I would need to go do is go down here and click submit request. I don't get charged for this or anything. And here we are on the main page. I should note that if you haven't used interlibrary loan, otherwise known as ILLiad, in the past, that is not the first page you're going to see. What you're going to see is a sign-up sheet for you to actually create an ILL account. And it's going to ask you for a bunch of silly things like your phone number and your address. Nobody uses that except for the library and they don't even actually really use it. It's just the way you have to set up an account so you can feel comfortable putting that information in. But once you've created an account, this is essentially what you will see. Um, it'll show you like which articles you have requested. And you can see my status is awaiting copyright clearance. The great thing is, is that Duquesne has the fastest Iliad service I have ever seen. I have ordered articles before and gotten them just a couple of hours later, um, which is super, super fast. Um, however, it can take a couple of days and we are on a time crunch in this course. So if you can, make sure that you request articles as soon as possible. What happens whenever an article becomes available to you is that you will get an email um, directly in your Duquesne email. And it will say, hey, this article is available. And then you can click on the link and it'll take you directly to this page, which is electronically received articles and you will be able to see all of the articles that you have requested. You can see that I have been requesting a lot recently. I'm getting ready to write the next chapter of my dissertation. Um, and you'll see that they're only available for a limited amount of time. Um, but if you go over here to view, you can actually click on them. And just like that very first example I showed you, here it is in a PDF form and you can print it or download it for yourself, which is great. And then you have it, you can keep it forever, you can love it, you can paper your bathroom with it, use it multiple times for research, whatever you desire, right? It's yours once you've downloaded it and saved it to your computer or printed it out. Okay, so let's get out of Iliad very quickly. Um, okay, so that is essentially Academic Search Elite, and you can request articles through Iliad through nearly any database that is um, hosted through the Gumberg Library. So that's something you can use across multiple databases. Let's go ahead and go back again, again. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry, you guys. Forgot that it opens up a new tab. Okay. So if we go back here to the main page, actually, let's go back to the actual main page uh, of, what are you doing, silly? Let's just click on the letter. Why are you? Oh, it's because I'm in education. All right, sorry guys. Lights grew up, okay. <laughs> 
So now that I'm back on the main page of the databases, um, I've shown you guys Academic Search Elite, which is really helpful. Uh, the next one I want to show you is JSTOR. The great thing about JSTOR and why I and so many others love it so much is that if the article is listed on JSTOR, JSTOR has it and you can download it for free immediately. You don't have to request it through Iliad. You can have it in an instant, which is great. Um, so this is JSTOR. Um, it is probably one of the most popular and widely used um, uh, databases across multiple different fields. So people from English studies use it, philosophy, history, business, um, medicine. It's going to have all kinds of information for you, which is really, really great. But again, I recommend you do choose that advanced search option. Okay. And you can see that it is asking you for the keyword. And it has that option too of or or not. Don't worry about these near five, near 10, or near 25. Those are just too complicated, trust me. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna put in the exact same search terms that I was using before, which are climate change and uh, fracking. It doesn't need to be capitalized. Um, and I could add a search bar too if I wanted to. Um, and then select an access type. All content is an option, but with JSTOR, you really just want content I can access. Um, you can see too that you can narrow your results. For you guys, what I'm gonna recommend is clicking on articles and books. And again, you can choose your publication date. So it says year, 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 or year, 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 slash, slash month. To keep it simple on yourselves, just do the years between what you want. Um, go ahead and ignore this stuff. We'll just keep scrolling down. Okay, submit advanced search. Come on, it's thinking. Okay, so showing one through 25 of 1,013 search results. That's a lot. Um, so we can try to narrow this down a little bit more um, if we want. So we might say, okay, well maybe 2005 is too far back. So how about I say 2010 instead? So it's gonna update. 1,007, okay, it only got rid of like six search results, what on earth? Um, but, okay, we can still handle that. Um, and so you can see that this looks actually not too different from Academic Search Elite. It's gonna tell you what kind of publication it is, then it's gonna give you the title of the article itself, or book chapter, Human Rights and Fracking in England, the Role of the Oregon Permanent People's Tribunal. Hmm. Well, another way that I could actually search this down or narrow down the search results is if I'm more specific about where I want um, my research to come from. So let's go back to advanced search. Okay, so I have to re-put everything in again. Let's go ahead and put, I accept I have to use my quote marks and fracking. I'm gonna say and United States. And again, I'm using those quote marks around United States because it's a phrase, or in this case, a proper noun that's more than two words, or two or more words, rather. Again, I'm gonna click reviews or articles and books. I'm gonna say from 2005 through 2020. And I'm just gonna scroll down, submit advanced search. Do, do, do. Okay, that really, really narrowed it down for us now. So now we don't have over a thousand results. Um, we actually have 664, which again is much more manageable than over a thousand. So I'm gonna look through these. The very first one is a book chapter, Citizen Resistance to Oil Production and Acid Fracking in the Sunshine State. So in Florida, I don't know, that might be interesting. If we look down here at the topics, it has to do with hydraulic fracturing, the Everglades, climate change, drilling, oil production, fossil fuels, hydraulics, congressional legislation, tourism, and oddly, panthers. I'm not sure how the panthers tie into this, but I kind of want to know now. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. Come on, friend. Okay, so the thing that kind of stinks about JSTOR um, is that it is less likely than a database like Academic Search Elite to provide you with an abstract. Um, so unfortunately, this is one of those cases where you would just want to read the first two pages and see if you think it's actually going to talk about stuff that is relevant to your topic. And if it's not, don't worry about it. 
you got 600 and some more results to look through, right? So let's say you were like, nope, I, I don't care about Florida. Don't care about it. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, I'm not sure why we are still getting stuff about England, but that's interesting. Fracking on YouTube, exploring risks, benefits, and human values. Okay, this sounds fascinating too. <laughs> so I could click on this. Come on, friend. And what's interesting about these two is that you can see that you can actually read them um, on, the, uh, on the database itself. Um, or you can go ahead and download the PDF again and save it for yourself. You just have to accept and proceed to download. This one, luckily enough, actually does contain an abstract and you can read it right here itself on the essay. So you could really easily read the abstract on this one and decide whether or not you wanted it. And just like with Academic Search Elite, um, if you were like, yeah, this sounds great, you could download the PDF you could save it to your desktop or you could print it out and have it for yourself. I know some people like to actually have like physical copies of things to read. Um, I am sometimes one of those people too. But this is JSTOR, it's really easy to use. It's really great and fast. It's gonna get you a bunch of results, right? That you can look through in a very, very easy manner. Um, this is again, one of my favorite databases. Okay. So there's one more database that I actually want to show to you guys. And I want to note too that um, the, the information that I'm giving you about how to use all of these databases can actually be taken and applied to pretty much any of the other ones that Gumberg Library has as well. But the last one I want to show you is the ProQuest Research Library. And this is another one of those databases like JSTOR and like Academic Search Elite that is going to grab a bunch of really, really um, useful stuff for you from a variety of different fields. As long as you know how to use your search terms properly and to narrow stuff down, you should get um, a manageable amount of information. Um, so you can see here that, again, this looks familiar, right? I have places to put in my search terms. So I'm just gonna do climate change. We're gonna stick with a theme here. I'm gonna add and fracking. And we learned from the last one that we want to specifically add and the United States. Okay. And you can see um, that you can limit it to full text or peer reviewed. Uh, if you just want full text and you don't want to play around with Iliad, I would recommend clicking that. Um, you can also choose publication date. Um, so all dates, so you can choose last seven days, right? So those are, those are really kind of narrow. Um, so on this date, after this date, specific date range is probably going to be best. So uh, what it's going to say is any month, any day, year, year, year. So let's go ahead and choose January 1st, 2005. I hope nobody was publishing articles on January 1st, 2005, um, right after New Year's. I hope everybody was sleeping. <laughs> That's usually what I'm doing on January 1st. July, we're going to leave that as any day. We're just going to say 2020. Okay, um, and so I wouldn't recommend worry about source type. I wouldn't worry too much about language. The other thing that might be useful for you guys is to actually select a document type. So you might want to select article, um, book, book chapter. I don't think there's anything else that would be useful. Um, I guess you could select essay, right? Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, you could go ahead and select news too. That would be useful for you. Maybe even report. Okay, but I think those are probably the only ones. And then here is the search. We're just gonna click that. It's really thinking about its life choices right now. Good for it. Okay, and you can see over here, we've got 93 results, which is pretty manageable, right? Less than 100 results because we were very, very, very specific about what the dates were, what kind of publications we want, and what our search terms were. And just like the other databases, you can go ahead and see Scotland extends ban on fracking indefinitely. That doesn't have anything to do with the US. Why did we get it? I'm not sure. Um, here's a halt to UK fracking. Now this sounds interesting, right? US imposes rules on fracking emissions. This is from 2016. So we can go ahead and click on this. Come on now, friend, you can do it. 
Okay, um, and here is actually the full text of it. So it looks like this was, yeah, additional reporting by Ed Cooks. Um, oh, it's from the Financial Times Limited. Okay, interesting. And here is actually the little article itself. Uh, and what's great about this one too, is if you go over here up on the top right hand side, you can save it as a PDF, which makes it easier for citing page numbers, right? So it's doing my request in process. Let's get out of there though. And you again can cite it. Come on friend. Why isn't the site thing opening? Oh, okay, there we go. Um, okay, it just took it a minute, it had to think. Uh, okay, and you can choose if we go down. Um, you want MLA 8th edition. Okay, and there it'll give you your citation for your works cited page. Easy peasy, simple, right? Okay, it doesn't look like this one is giving us an abstract. Um, I do not believe ProQuest is particularly good at um, providing um, abstracts um, either. But let me take a look. Yeah, um, this is another this is another news report though, uh, from London. Interestingly enough, although it's about the U.S. Let's see if oh maybe this one because it's a scholarly journal. Let me check. Come on. Okay, so in some cases it seems like. I had to refresh my own memory with this um, because this isn't a database that I particularly use a lot for my specific field. But it looks like, um, so for newspaper sources, they're not giving you an abstract because those sources are so short that you can just read them in a couple minutes anyway. But this is actually from a scholarly journal. So you do have an abstract here. And again, you can read that and see if you think that this article is going to be useful for you. And it's been cited by seven people in the past. <laughs> Okay, and there's all the information about it. Um, oh, do we not have access to this? Okay, so it looks like ProQuest Research Library does not have direct access to this. Um, so you can also see if that's the case with ProQuest. Over here on the right-hand side, you can see full text options, check full text finder for full text. Let's see what it says. Come on, okay, so we do have access to this one too, but in case you didn't, again, you can request it through Iliad. Um, so those are really some of the major databases that I think are going to be helpful for you guys. Um, if you have questions about using them, if you get stuck on search terms or anything, um, you can just email me and let me know. I would be happy to help you research or figure out some search terms or whatever you need. Um, and I will see you very shortly in the next video.